Hello, my name is Paul Craig. I'm from the Rochester Institute of Technology. And today I'm going to speak to you about best practices for inclusion of deaf and hard of hearing scientists at conferences. Here's an overview of my presentation. First, I'll talk about diversity in the deaf and hard of hearing community. Then I'll talk about a survey I conducted. What was the methodology? What were the questions? And then finally, I'll have some suggestions for improved conference participation. I began working more directly with the deaf and hard of hearing population at RIT, at the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, about four years ago. And I realized very quickly that I did not understand a lot of what was going on. Uh, and one of the things I realized, my assumption going in was that the deaf and hard of hearing population was uniform, that they were the same in the way they communicated, and I was very wrong about that. So some of them use American Sign Language, some use signed English, some use spoken English. Some of them have cochlear implants, which confer a certain level of hearing for them. Some of them are deaf from birth. Some became deaf at a later date. The survey that I took it consisted of talking with four deaf or hard of hearing scientists in Rochester, New York. Had seven open-ended questions. I did face-to-face -face interviews with, with these four scientists. Two of the interviews required interpreters. Two did not. Here are the questions. What scientific meetings have you attended? What worked well for you as a deaf person? What could be improved? What does equal access mean to you? What accommodations do you require for talks, posters, and informal conversations? How could we train conference attendees to engage with deaf or hard of hearing people? And do you have any other thoughts? And here are the scientific meetings uh, that they attended, the, the logos for those different meetings. And the meetings range from uh, science, medical science, biomedical science, the annual biomedical research conference for minority students, two conferences about communication, about teaching, about cognitive neuroscience. So there was quite a variety. After we completed the survey, I worked with Kat Womack, who's a sign language interpreter, on developing a document about best practices for conference organizers. And here are a few of them. One is to study ADA requirements and find out what's expected uh, so that everybody understands. Uh, another thing is to learn the terms. What is a sign language interpreter? What is American Sign Language? What is Sign English? Uh, what kind of captioning is available? Another important thing is to start early. As soon as you know you're going to have deaf or hard of hearing uh, participants at the con conference, you should start working with local agencies. You should start identifying resources. And it's really important to think about logistics. Some of the, the adjustments and best practices are very simple. For example, providing reserved seating at the front uh, of a major talk or a large talk for the deaf and hard of hearing participants. It's also important to schedule interpreters and captioning for keynote, plenary, and breakout sessions and to provide access to interpreters for other sessions, like poster sessions or sessions with vendors. For conference attendees who are deaf or hard of hearing, it's important when you register to notify the conference uh, of your needs and communicate regularly with the organizers to make sure that they understand your needs and that they're going to be met. If you're going to be presenting, Send the interpreters copies of your slides early so that they can get familiar with the terms. Uh, they may have to fingerspell some of those terms uh, if they're for technical terms or to develop technical terms, uh, versions of those terms. Also help the conference find service providers. You may be able to help them identify people that you've worked with in a given city or, or that you know of. And now for some best practices for conference attendees who are hearing and who want to interact with deaf or hard of hearing people. The first thing is to submit your slides or poster early. That way, the interpreter will have a chance to review that before the presentation, and they'll be able to learn some of the terms that are there. The second thing is to speak to the person, not to the interpreter. 
And you may be inclined to look at the interpreter because they're the one actually vocalizing the words in the conversation to you. But speak to the person. Ask for clarification if you need it, as you would in any conversation. And finally, just relax and trust that you want to communicate and the people you're speaking with want to communicate. To summarize, the deaf and hard of hearing community is highly diverse and wants to communicate with you. Traditional conference formats do not work well for deaf and hard of hearing members, and access to interpreters, captioning, and reserved seating make inclusion possible. I'd like to conclude with acknowledgments of the Rochester Institute of Technology and the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. Also like to thank the National Institutes of Health and specifically the National Institutes of General Medical Sciences Research Training Initiative for Student Enhancement or RISE. And that's our grant number. Thank you very much.